morning and welcome to week two of unit six, where we are focusing on log properties and how to actually solve logarithmic and exponential functions. So first and foremost, let's practice with our properties. Uh, these are not necessarily a property, like they are properties you should know, but they are technically ones you should already know. You should come into this class knowing that anything raised to the zero with power is always equal to one. Anything raised to the first power is always equal to itself. This is the true nature of negative exponents right here. This is what we call the power, or sorry, the product rule of exponents, where you have the same base. If you, you can take their exponents and uh, add them. If you have the same base and you're dividing, you take their exponents and subtract them. This is the quotient rule of exponents. And finally, we have the power rule of exponents, which tells me if I have a power raised to a power, then I can multiply those powers. Finally, if you didn't know what this is, what a fraction exponent is, it is your root. They are your roots. So just a recall from Algebra 2. So the three things we're going to focus on in this beginning, and then we have a secondary set as well when we come to solving. But what are the what are the properties? How do we simplify, expand, and condense? And so that's what I'm focusing on in this video with these question sets. And then we're going to very quickly learn the change of base formula. So we have the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. And so what the product rule tells me, if I have the same base and I'm adding two logs, I can actually condense it down to one log where it's multiplied or vice versa. If I have one log uh, with multiplication occurring, I can split it up into addition. Same thing with division and subtraction. And finally, if I have some log where the value is raised to a power, that power can actually be dragged to the front as a coefficient or vice versa. If I see a coefficient I know that it is also the power and if it's a fraction then that means it's probably a root if it's a negative then it's going to be in the denominator all right so this one says express each log in terms of the natural log of 2 and the natural log of 3 so if I'm looking at the natural log of 54 I can break 54 up so what are factors of 54 well we know 1 and 54 that's rather easy but that doesn't get us 2 or 3 we also know 2 and 27 ding 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 we already have the natural log of 2 right here but what about the natural log of 3 well if I remember that 3 is simply 9 times 3 and 9 is 3 times 3 then this can be rewritten as 3 cubed. So I'm already in terms of natural log 2 and natural log 3. So because I'm saving these inks today. Uh, step one would be figuring out my factor tree. Step two would be re re rewriting it in terms of the factor we liked. So this becomes the natural log of instead of 54, two times 27. But you know that we're going to even write that even nicer as two times three cubed. So this is now the uh, product rule or the addition multiplication rule. So I can write that as the natural log of two plus the natural log of three cubed. Now we have a power rule. I know I can drag its power to the coefficient up front. So that becomes the natural log of two plus three times the natural log of three. And this would be our finished answer. We have now expressed it in terms of natural log two and natural log Three. If I wanted to verify that I had the right answer, I can check using a calculator. So uh, here we have the same answer, the same answer. We're good to go. Let's plug it into a calculator. And as you can see, we very clearly have the exact same answer. So we're good to go there. If you are checking at home, I recommend desmos.com, not, not slash scientific because it doesn't necessarily give you um, uh, the, the correct number of placeholder or decimal places, but I recommend desmos.com slash calculator, actually plugging it into the space where you would graph. Well, there is a spot, uh, it will calculate it for you, and it typically goes out to the thousandths place or uh, three decimal places. And so um, since I require two, that gives you the opportunity to, um, oh my God, I'm struggling today, to double check your work and get all the right answer digitally and so it just you know it's a fail safe right there just trying to help you all out all right let's move on to a second question so what happens if i have it natural log in nine divided by eight and it still wants it in terms of two and three well first 
and foremost, we are going to do a, a factor tree. But in this case, let's do step one as going ahead and separating it out. What rule do I see? I see the quotient rule because I see division occurring. And since I see the quotient rule, I'm going to go ahead and write it as the natural log of nine minus the natural log of eight. Now here is my step two on the side. I can figure out factor tree of nine and the factor tree of eight. Nine is uh, three times three or three squared. Eight is two times four and four is two times two. So we can see this as two cubed. So I'm going to rewrite these. And why did I pick those values? Because they gave it to us, the natural log of two and the natural log of three. So I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of three squared minus the natural log of two cubed. Those are now the power rules. I can drag those to the front and so that becomes two times the natural log of three minus three times the natural log of two. And so this would be our end answer. But of course, to verify, let's check it in a calculator. Those are the same answers that I got. Great. So plug it into a calculator and ta-da, it proves that these are equivalent statements. So natural log of nine divided by eight can really be rewritten as this. And how this helps us is as we progress to solving, you have to be able to manipulate whether they're real numbers or variables, you have to be able to manipulate these. Excuse me. Moving on, how do I evaluate these logs? This is very similar to what we did all last week. We kind of practiced through this. Well, we really did practice through this on Friday with our circuit. So if you happen to have been absent for Friday with our circuit, you didn't necessarily get to investigate forward. So this is mostly for those students who weren't here. So just a recap, what's the first thing I can do? Well, I can deal with this ugly fifth root. As we now know, all roots can be rewritten as a fraction exponent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite it as log base four of six 64 to the one fifth. This is now a power rule, so I can drag that forward one fourth of log base four of 64. Well, now I need to figure out what 64's factor trees are. Well, really, we're just trying to get it down to a term specifically of four. We want that four. So, what do I know? Okay, so I can do. Um, 16 times 4 is 64, and 16 happens to be 4 times 4. So we know that 64 is actually 4 cubed. So I can rewrite this as 1 fifth of log base 4 here, step 3, sorry. 1 fifth of log base 4 times 4 cubed. I can drag that 3 forward just like I dragged this 1 fifth forward. That becomes 3 fifths times log base 4 of 4. And we all know that this is going to cancel out. So this becomes three-fifths times one, which is just three-fifths. And we can confirm this. We can plug this into a calculator. I think I... I did not. Okay. Well, if you plug this into a calculator, this original value gets you 0.6 and 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. So we can confirm it that way. If you want to check, go to desmos.com slash calculator and plug that in. If you don't know how to get log base 4, um, there are some buttons at the bottom of Desmos. In fact, let me go ahead and open that up desmos.com slash calculator. So this is where I recommend. I don't recommend you going to scientific because it doesn't necessarily give you all of the places that we require. So if I click down here, there are some new options. If I go to function, if I go to miscellaneous, I can find log base. And so this says log base four of, uh, and we got to get the fifth root of 64 is 0 0.6 and so is 3 divided by 5 in case you didn't know that fifths are 0.2 so there we go ta-da same answer and let's get this back up okay so moving forward, uh, let's evaluate this one. So this one seems scary, but it really shouldn't be that scary because I should remember that there is an invisible E right here. The natural base of natural log is E. So I'm going to drag this two forward. So step one, that's a one. I'm going to drag two forward because I'm allowed to. And I'm going to drag that three forward because I'm allowed to. I know that the natural base uh, natural log of E equals 1. So this is going to become 2 times 5 times 1 minus 3 times 1. So that really just becomes 12 minus 3, which is 7. If I plug this into a calculator, I also get 7. 
Alrighty, let's deal with expansions. So if I expand an expression, I start with something small and funky and I make it large and funky. So what do I see between 12 and x to the fifth, between x to the fifth and y to the negative two? This is multiplication. So this is our product rule. Okay, so if you need to go back and check that, this is our product rule. So this becomes the log of 12 plus the log of x to the fifth plus the log of y to the negative two. Now I see my power rule and I'm allowed to drag those forward. When I drag this forward, make sure the negative goes with it. So this becomes 12 times log. Oops, sorry. That's not, there is nothing to drag there, Miss Jag. There is nothing to drag there. We can't do anything with that. That's not an exponent. Uh, so this just stays log of 12 plus five log of x. And here this becomes minus log uh, two log of y. And so uh, there's two ways you could see this. This negative two could imply that I was in the denominator, so you would have known it was the quotient rule, or because you bring that negative with it, you see that we actually have the quotient rule occurring right here. This would have been on bottom, but this is our end answer. This is a finished expansion. There's nothing further I can do to this, um, except maybe do this as 12. Uh, 12 could be three times four, and you could split that up, or two times six, but really that doesn't help you in the end, so I leave it the way it is. Let's expand one more. So this truly is the quotient rule. Okay, so if you need to check it, please do. So step one, I'm going to divide it up into its quotients. Actually, step one, I'm going to convert this um, root to its exponent form. So this becomes the natural log of x squared over 4x plus 1 to the 1 half. So then step two, now I get to use the quotient rule. So this becomes the natural log of x squared minus the natural log of 4x plus 1 to the 1 half. These are power rules, so I can drag them forward. And so this becomes 2 times the natural log of x minus 1 half times the natural log of 4x plus 1, which is our answer. Moving on to condensing. So if we can take something small and make it large, guess what? You can work backwards. So step one, I'm going to deal with this power slash coefficient. So step one, I'm going to make this log base three of x to the fourth minus log base three of x plus six to the one third. To the one third actually makes this log base three of the cubed root of x plus six. Okay, uh, now I get to deal with this subtraction, which is our quotient rule. So this becomes log base three of the entire fraction x to the fourth over the cubed root of x plus six and that was step two ta-da that is our end answer and we can confirm we dealt with this four we dealt with this four we dealt with this one third we dealt with this one third are they the same basis yes so can i use the quotient rule to put them together absolutely quotient means divide ta-da we have it already let's do one more condense each expression so again i'm going to deal with this power rule and I'm going to deal with this power rule step one. So this becomes the natural log of x minus four to the sixth plus the natural log of x cubed. This is the power rule, which means, or sorry, product, why did I say power? Product rule, which means to multiply. So this becomes the natural log of, I'm going to put my x cubed first but I know that in this particular instance, the cumulative property tells me that two times three is three times two. So multiplication, it doesn't matter what order you go in. I just did it this way so you wouldn't get confused as to what exponent related to which. But it doesn't really matter which direction you go. And that is the correct answer right there. And I think that's all I got for you. Yep. Okay. So now it's your turn to answer questions regarding um, can you convert it to different numbers? Can you simplify? Can you evaluate, condense, uh, expand, blah, blah, blah. So those types of questions are coming your way. And I'll see you back for the change of base formula.